What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and today we have a what if the Raiders took Calvin Johnson. As a rookie, this guy is 87 overall. That's freaking ridiculous. That man was a man amongst boys. And this is the season right after uh, they traded away Randy Moss to the Patriots. So, I mean, if you kind of want to go deep, Al Davis, maybe, you know, this would have been the move. Story goes that Lane Kiffin wanted Calvin, but Jamarcus's arm was just so enticing to the Raiders organization that they went with Jamarcus. And that proved out to be a mistake. A big mistake. But we're going to write that wrong today. We want to see if we can get to the Super Bowl with this squad. The defense is pretty okay. We're kind of old on the D-line. Warren Sapp in his 12th year, but still an 89 overall D-tackle, which is smooth. Then the linebacker core looking pretty smooth as well. Our defensive scheme is a 4-3 defense. Um, and, yeah, Lane Kiffin's playbook kind of stinks. So I'm going to be changing it if we do get to the playoffs because I'll be checking that stuff out before I jump in and yeah but speaking of playoffs playoffs i just hope we can win the game we did beat the detroit lions ironically enough the first game of calvin johnson's career was versus the raiders so here it's versus the lions and we do not make the postseason i believe we went like four and 12 maybe five and 11 something along those lines uh we went with josh mccann as our starter 16 tds 18 interceptions sacked 50 times. Lamont Jordan though, had a great year. 1,500 yards, 7 TDs, averaging 4.3 yards per carry, 97.1 yards per game. Calvin led the way with 62 receptions for 672 yards. That is not a bad rookie year for him. I mean, maybe for him it is. I don't know his rookie numbers, but they probably were outstanding. But in, in this, in Madden, in the quarterback play, it was a pretty solid year, if you ask me. So, what do we have to address moving forward? Clearly everything, because we, we, I mean, we kind of suck. But Namdi is good. I think our secondary is going to be pretty good. Michael Huff, he was a good sa he is a good safety in Madden. He has speed. He's a decent tackler. Um, so, I think our secondary is going to be pretty smooth. I'm hoping that that's going to be the case. If not, this rebuild might take a long time. Definitely got to find a quarterback. Marshawn Lynch. Look at him. Look, the rookie of the year. Calvin was third. Patrick Willis French is second to John Beeson. I believe Patrick, he won that award in real life. Bolger was the best QB. Best running back goes to Brian Westbrook. Best receiver goes to Marvin Harrison. Best O-lineman, John Running. I believe his son is now in the league, right? This, this is crazy, man. It's crazy how many people we grew up watching. Now the kids are in the league doing their thing, at least trying to do their thing. Coach of the year is Tony Dungy. So wild card round of the playoffs in year one. Chiefs beat the Bengals, Rams over the Cowboys, Patriots over the Ravens, and the Eagles over the Saints. The Colts, they beat the Pats, the Redskins, they beat the Eagles, the Chiefs, they beat the Steelers, and the Rams, they beat the Bears. Colts over the Chiefs and the Rams over the Skins. And the Rams, they end up beating the Colts in the Super Bowl. So those could be the two best teams moving forward in this franchise, in this rebuild. We will hire Mike Singletary as our defensive coordinator. We have Zach Crockett, who retired. And we have Dwayne Starks, cornerback. He also retired. Uh, Newberry, Taylor, Josh McCown. These are the guys that we're going to be letting go. Everybody who needed a contract that I feel like is going to help our team, I signed them. So I'm just showing you guys that we are letting go in case you're wondering. Yo, where's my favorite player? Hopefully none of these guys are your favorite player. In free agency, Fanica wanted to come to town. Big Todd right tackle wanted to come to town. So we have boosted up our O-line in a major way. Fanica, he said he wanted to go to like a top-tier team. I don't know if that means like... An historical team or like a really, really good team? Historical, yes. Raiders are definitely historical. Good? Definitely not. But we were able to get them. I, I, I figured i shoot my shot and I'll just see what happens. L let me shoot my shot and let me just see what happens. So we end up taking a Hughes at running back. I do like Lamont Jordan, but I feel like we need a better running back than Lamont Jordan. And then in the second round, we don't have a draft pick. And I'm like, where's my draft pick for the second round? And I don't, I, I don't remember actually doing a franchise in this game. I think back then I was just more focused on online ranked matches at the time. So I do not remember if that was a glitch that happened or if I didn't turn off some setting because I always go through and I and I user everything. No, the coach is not just going to be signing players, cutting players, changing up the depth chart. That's not happening. That's my job. But all I know is that we only have one draft pick taken, Hughes, and 
Yes, nobody else. And it went around three. And I'm like, yo, the draft is pretty important to a rebuild. Like, we all know this. But at the end of the day, something happens. So what I realize is that sometimes they're just going to make trades on your behalf. So we went with a right guard in round three, a deep tackle in round four, uh, another right guard in uh, round five, and then some linebacker help because our outside linebacker at the left side is pretty pedestrian at this point. So not a bad draft all in all. I just want to know where did my second round pick go? And what did I get for it if there was a trade? So in the offseason, we did pick up Seneca Wallace, 82 overall, uh, about to say receiver, 82 overall quarterback. Hughes is 84 overall with 94 speed. He's just as good as Lamont Jordan with more speed. So that to me is a no-brainer. We're going to start him. Uh, we need to boost up our receivers. So we did something, something kind of in the offseason. You see, we got Chris Cooley. Chris Cooley, he was available at free agency so i was like let me bring him in so now we have an 80 overall in zach miller stewart is 72 overall and we have chris cooley at 90 overall tied in core got pretty solid left tackle is decent fanica i am not afraid to sign old linemen that are past 30 years old because these guys they they tend to hold on to their overalls pretty uh pretty good throughout their whole careers even when they're in the late stages of their career so i am not afraid to sign old linemen that are well past their prime uh yeah gallery get your butt up out of here we're going with big tide 94 overall so our o-line is looking good the line is decent still we did pick up courtney brown just to be our backup left end when you do play these games the guys get tired like fatigue i don't want to say fatigue is a problem but you will have to substitute guys in and then your guys will get subbed out because people are going to get tired left outside linebacker is definitely a concern we got two guys later on in the draft it will be easy for me to say in the second round I was going to hit on that position, and I might have, but again, I didn't really get a chance to look at any left outside linebackers in the draft till it was basically too late, and yeah. And then hopefully that thing doesn't happen again, but spoiler alert, in one of these off seasons, it's going to happen again, and I'm going to be just so mad that I may just send the draft. I don't know. I don't know. Namdi, he's still 93 overall. He's a dog. We, we signed Fisher, 78 overall, corner staff for route. He has speed, but his coverage skills are just not that good. So even though he has speed, he's just not that good. And the Raiders have a lot of speed, and they're one of the funner teams to play with online, especially I think like Madden 10, I want to say, online Madden 10. The Raiders, they were fun to play with online, like for real, for real. Especially when you subbed out, um, um, you subbed out Jamarcus for, was it Gronkowski, I think was a quarterback. I believe he played at Toledo, I want to say. I'm not sure. Anyways, back to what we're talking about. Boom. Playoff Raiders. Playoffs. Yes, playoffs. And we're going to be taking on the Ravens in the wild card round. 32 TDs, 8 interceptions for the homie Seneca Wallace. Are you kidding me? Hughes ran for 1,100 yards. We only gave him the ball 300 times. I say only. He averaged 3.7 yards per carry. Lamont and Jordan, when he got in there, averaged 3.8. So I don't know if our old line got better or worse. I don't know. Running game wasn't as good. But our passing game was great. 76 receptions for 712 yards for the homie Calvin Johnson. I don't know if we were the right team to take him. Because, again, he's 87 overall. And I would think that he would blossom into, like, a beast. But right now, he's still like around 87, 88 overall. But we'll see what happens. Namdi is that dude doing his thing. Peyton Manning is the MVP. Seneca Wallace was second in the MVP. Second. That's crazy. That's crazy. He was third in Offensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Ian Gold. Rookie of the Year. Some quarterback for the, uh, for uh, I guess Eli is going to be on the bench. That's crazy. Uh, Weaver, defensive back, he wins it. Peyton Manning, best quarterback. LT, best running back. Best receiver goes to Torrey Holt. Big Torrey. D lineman goes to Andre Carter, the X Niner. Ian Gold, best linebacker. Best DB goes to Quentin Jammer. Kicker goes to Jeff Wilkins. A lot of X Niners doing their thing for other teams. Anyways, man, that's neither here nor there. This is a Raider video. Stop talking about. I'm sorry. Raiders, we went 10 and 6. That was second best in the AFC West. We had three teams make it to the uh, postseason, though, because the Broncos had a, had a 10 and 6 record. They also went. So good look for them. And McNair letting the fly to Todd Heap takes a huge hit, but hangs on to the football. Can we win our first crack at the postseason? Win wild card round. That'd be a good look. But the Ravens, you know, they got plans for something different. Third down and five. That pass caught by Williams, and that's a big catch, man. 
Toss play. Spin move by McGahee. And he's into the end zone just like that. So 7 nothing. We're down. Wallace looking downfield. Haloti Nada says they're going to get Nata. Third down and 16. We throw it deep. Nearly intercepted. And we go three and out to kick off our first offensive possession in the postseason. Wilcox, he makes the catch. I'm like, why can't we cover nobody? I know they got Aaron McNair, but come on, man. Namdi, he's going to stop McGahee from picking up a first down. Third down and three. They throw it, and Tommy Kelly gets in there with a nice pass rush. Bats that ball down. They set up for a field goal. Kick is up, and the kick is good. So, 10 to nada is the score. We're going to run the ball with Hughes, looking like Tyrone Wheatley from back in the day with that 47 on. Now it's third down and four. Wallace going to drop it off to Johnson, who makes the catch. And big Calvin coming through when I need him to. And now we let it fly. Caught to Coley. And Ed Reed, that is not nice of you. But nobody pays you to be nice on the football field. Ain't that right? So we run the ball to the left side. We pick up a handful. Third down and five. Wallace looking and Cooley coming through yet again in a major way. We got to get it right here. Third down and ten. And I force it into quadruple coverage. Cinco Badinko coverage. I don't know how many people there were in purple, but there was a lot of them. But we do not come the field goal. So 10-3 to 3 is the score. Third down and five here in the third quarter. McNair looking downfield. He gets sacked. Big Tommy Kelly gets up in there. So now we're under pressure our darn selves. And Trevor Price is an absolute goon in this game. I mean goon. He gets a great jump almost every time. And then I remember how to play this thing. Check it up to your six foot four, six foot five receiver and let him do some work. Randy Moss was a beast in this game. Second down to 14, throwing that thing. Oh, Calvin. Calvin Johnson. He done tied this thing up. The Ravens can't believe it. Never more. <laughs> Never more. Them big Warren Sapp still getting it done. Him and Ray Lewis used to play play at Miami together. That's crazy. That, that, that defense should have been one of the best in the nation, was it? Anybody remember that? They also had Dwayne The Rock Johnson as a backup defensive end, defensive tackle, I believe. Anyways, third down and five. Back to what we talking about. Cooley, he makes the catch yet again. Second down and ten. Wallace looking, throws it to Cooley in another huge hit. Stop his sticking people, Terrell Suggs. Third down and four. Wallace throws it. And I thought the window was open, but it was closed. Calvin's trying to pull a DK Metcalf. I'm like, no, just let the man score. We got to try to win. We got to try to score our darn selves. I'm not about to have them move the clock and kick a game winning field goal. Not on my watch as he throws up to you like Edron James at the Hall of Fame. Anyways, Higgins up to 25. Up to the 30. Crosses the 35. Pretty good field position to kick things off. Second down and 10. Wallace looking down. Phil letting it fly. And it's going to be caught. I was so afraid to test McAllister in this game. But we did it right there. And it worked out for us. Looking down. Phil. Wallace to the backside. That's caught by Porter. Even Porter's forcing them to lean back. Five seconds on the clock. Fourth and goal. We got a score. And I had Hughes wide open. That's on me. Had Hughes wide open. I was not expecting him to be wide open, but he was. 17 to 10 is the final in this one. Aaron McNair outdueled the homie Seneca Wallace, basically because we had that pick. Hughes only ran the ball 11 times for 40 yards. Not the greatest day on the ground. But Calvin Johnson, 4 for 106, and it all came in that way. Third quarter, fourth quarter, basically all in the second half. Only had that one catch in the first half, which was just a little dump off on the drag route. Haloti Nada with two sacks. Warren Sapp got in with a sack for the Oakland Raiders. Wild card weekend. Patriots over the Broncos. Seahawks over the Rams. Eagles over the Lions. The Colts, they put hands on the Ravens. The Skins beat the Seahawks. The Patriots over the Chargers. And the Eagles over the Saints. Colts beat the Patriots in the conference championship game. And the Skins over... Over the Eagles, I believe, right? And then the Colts, they beat the Skins. We need another defensive coordinator, believe it or not. Mike Singletary did such a good job that he is out. He's gone. He became a coach somewhere, possibly. So I'm looking. Look, we got to make a trade. So I'm going to get rid of a draft pick. and Not a draft pick. We're going to get a draft pick from the Raiders. Not the best draft pick in the world. Fifth round pick to get rid of Robert Gallery. Basically to save cap room. That's basically why we did the save cap room. So you see how many draft picks we have. Okay? You saw it. These are the draft picks. The draft starts, and now look at my draft picks. Where did my second-round pick go? 
Now, granted, we did move up in the draft to number seven. But still, we trade with Minnesota and nobody asked me. Nobody, nobody asked me my opinion if we, if we should do that. So I do draft a John Carpenter defensive tackle to go with uh, uh, Warren Sapp and to replace Warren Sapp eventually. And here goes the guys that we end up drafting. Abba, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Free safety, he could be a good one. Dishman at receiver, a cornerback, another left tackle, and halfback. Those are like our top six picks of the draft. And then everybody else was a late round pick just to get some, you know, depth on the roster. That's basically it. So Seneca, he is still our uh, our uh, quarterback. We did bring back Josh McCown. He's our backup now. You see the halfback position, blossoming. Calvin is 88 overall. Again, I feel like I'm laying Calvin down. Like, for real, I'm laying Calvin down. This guy... He was drafted at 87 overall. Yes, if he just stays where he is, he's still a good receiver. But he should be in the 90s by now, and he's just not. So I move him to the second string receiver to see if he gets some more numbers that way, just to test it out. Um, I do think like we're, we're still a few drafts, I think, away, a few off-seasons away from making a push to the Super Bowl. But if we make it back to the playoffs, that's great. But I need Calvin to prove to be that dude. You know what I'm saying? To prove to be that dude. So Carpenter is actually 82 overall. You see me going back right here. He's 81. Excuse me. 81 overall. So I'm going to put him right there with Warren Sapp. He, that, that's going to be a 1-2 punch at the tackle. I love the O-line and D-line play. So we got to make sure that that's right. Get a pass rush. Open up some lanes for the running back. And, of course, protect that pretty boy back there throwing the football. All right? Left outside linebacker is still an issue. But, like I said, we might not be able to address that for another couple of years. In the regular season, we started off like 0-4. Had a bye week. And after the bye week, we lost to the Skins. Now, the Skins have been in the, in the what the conference championship game in the Super Bowl already. So, they're one of the better teams. So, maybe this schedule just was not for us. <laughs> it was not for us. We don't get our first win until week, what, week 8 versus the Broncos? Week 8 versus the Broncos. And then we proceed to lose all of them except for the Chargers. We beat the Chargers. Seneca, he's looking not to play for Raiders no more. He, he's like, I'm out of here, and I'm like, good. You're sick of me. I'm sick of you. Let's just part ways because my goodness, that's horrible. How you throw 32 touchdowns in year one and then come back with less than 20? My goodness gracious. You, you can have less than 20 for Troy Aikman and give him the ball to freaking um, Emmitt Smith all day long, but not here, okay? Maybe putting Calvin at the right wide receiver number two was a bad look, but hey, I mean, I was trying to get him some better numbers. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, okay? I don't know what to tell you. Burgess with 12 sacks. Cully with... 10, and then Carpenter was 7 at the D tackle spot. That's not bad at all. Namdi with 4 interceptions. Kurt Mar Morrison with 6 of them things. Wild card round. Colts over Dolphins. Saints over Falcons. Chargers put hands on the Titans. My gosh. How you make the playoffs just to do that? My goodness gracious. That was ugly. They were, and they were the away team. Goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. Postseason, the Skins and the Patriots. And the Skins get that Super Bowl. The Skins. Oh, it was Santana Moss and Randy Moss. It was a duel. Duel of the Mosses. We need an offensive coordinator. Bring in Huey. He's supposed to improve our running backs, but but not by like that much. There's no like plus awareness, plus juke move, plus ball carrier vision, nothing like that. So hey, it is what it is there. Anyways, man, this is the these are the guys that we're not going to bring back. Not bringing back Seneca Wallace. It's time to find our franchise quarterback. He did help us. I'm not saying that he, that's his fault. Maybe if I leave Calvin at the number two, number three, number number one receiver. You know, maybe things turn out differently. So, quarterback, we got a decision to make. There's, there's four that can go in the first round. We have the first pick in the draft. Are these guys the most talented guys in the world? No, because there's no top five by there. But, hey, I don't know what's going to happen with my second round pick. <laughs> As you can see, I, I just don't know. So, hey, Dorwood, Anquan Dorward from Penn State, 6'3", 217. Throw power looks to be good. Throw accuracy looks to be good. Not an athlete, really, but I think his speed is decent, so we go with him. In the round number two, we still have the pick, surprisingly. We're going to go with Eubanks. OG Eubanks, 6'7", 23. You saw what I could do with Calvin. I'm not saying that he's going to be able to do that, but he's 6'7". At the least, he should be able to be tall enough to moss some people just based off of height. We did, we did go with two inside linebackers. I mean, left outside linebackers, excuse me. Hopefully, we find our guy. Hopefully we do. But I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think we will. I, just, I don't think we will. So I'm going to trade our first pick in next year's draft for Carlos Dansby. Yes. Is he worth a first? Probably not. But I'm desperate just to beef up my defense some more. 
Because I'm figuring that, you know, you just have to have depth. You have to have depth in this game for them to think that you're a good team, as you can see. Okay, I guess year number two was just an anomaly, and this is the norm. Getting our butts whooped week in and week out. So next year, well, I think this is year four. So year five, I'm going to just, in year five, the offseason before year five, I guess what I'm really trying to say, we are going to be going ham. Like, seriously. Because this roster is, is, is good at some points, and then it's not good. But my, <laughs> the quarterback, though, 4,200 yards passing, 29 TDs, 7 interceptions. I did move Calvin back to the number one receiver spot. Hughes only got the ball 173 times, 4.1 yards per carry, though. Not a bad year. Not bad. He needed more carries. We just, I decided just to change up the coaching scheme to pass the ball all day. That's what I chose to do, and that and that kind of worked out. But if you look at it, receiving, Hughes caught 54 passes. He caught 54 passes, which was second on the team. So, hey, we did get him over 1,000 yards on purpose. Calvin had his best year on the Raiders, 10 TDs, 4, 1,400 yards receiving, 85 receptions, averaging 17.5 yards per game. That's a Calvin Johnson type of year. We got to throw the ball more. That, that's how you do it. Just throw the ball more. Did that help our defense? Probably not. Probably not. They probably got tired. They're kind of older. But, hey, it is what it is. This is all about Calvin Johnson and helping the Raiders get to that Super Bowl. And I guess, yo, I'm going to give ourselves. I usually do four seasons, but clearly four seasons didn't work. <laughs> four seasons didn't work out. So we're just going to go until we have a good playoff run. And then I'm going to call it. All right? We have a good playoff run. Get the conference championship game. If we lose, then so be it. But, my gosh, I was getting a headache at this point. All right? So, yes, Darwood, rookie of the year. He was out to throw that thing. Mentor for the Ravens. So the Ravens no longer have um, no longer have Steve McNair. They have Mentor. Mentor, I could have drafted him. He looked to be pretty solid. But I went with the homie Durwood, and it worked out for us. All right? The Rams are still the Rams. They still got offense for days. O-line goes to, the, goes to Willie Anderson and the Cincinnati Bengals in year 14. You see, O-line, D-line, you, 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 could, you could get these guys older in their career, like, you know, 10th year in their career, and it's not a bad move. Not a bad move at all. There might not be, you know, league MVP, all defensive world players anymore like a J.J. Watt, but you telling me that most teams don't want a J.J.? I'll take J.J. any day of the week, especially the position that he plays as a 3-4 DN. Like, he ain't supposed to be getting 20 sacks per year, and he did that, you know, for like two, three straight years, at least around that number. So, yeah. Anyways, man, the Colts, Seahawks, they made it to the postseason, made it to the Super Bowl, and the Se Seahawks, they get the job done versus the Colts. We need a new coach. Lane Kiffin, you're fired. You you are done, sir. You are done. Yes, you might improve my quarterback skills, plus one for throw, actually throw power and awareness, but I, no, I'm not feeling that. Mike Tomlin, I need you in my life. It's going to cost the Oakland Raiders 10 years, I mean, four years, $10 million. Not that bad, especially when you're paying John Gruden. Not to get you to the playoffs. He's making $10 million per year for over the next 10 years. That's $100 million for a coach. And I know you was desperate. But my goodness gracious. That's ridiculous. So when you get a new head coach, all of the settings go back to default. And default basically be computer does everything. So these are the guys that I really, really wanted to re-sign. Everybody that's over like 80 overall for the most part, I bring back. Except for like Seneca Wallace. Um, but here, everybody came back, basically, because Mike Tom was like, no, I'm keeping you, I'm keeping you, I'm keeping you. These were the guys I went after in free agency. Antonio Gates decided to come. I mean, hey, I, I, I just, I, I, hey, at times, you see somebody, you like how they look, you like their demeanor, and you just shoot your shot, and you never know what's going to happen. If they say no, then you're right back where you were before you asked. But if they say yes, I mean... Life just gets a little bit better when they say yes, right? So we got two cornerbacks at the end. So, hey, we're going to get another cornerback. Going to go left in, deep tackle, strong safety, another deep tackle, and a middle linebacker in this year's draft. I feel like because Mike Tomlin re-signed everybody, we're actually going to have a pretty good team because we're going to have so much depth that the, that the computer, that the algorithm is going to think that we're good, okay? Doorward is 80 overall. We picked up Eli Manning. I'm going to let them play it out. Whoever has the better preseason will be our starter. I got Eli just because. It's Eli. 85 overall. He's not bad at all. I'm not just going to let him sit out there to go to some other team. No. I'm going to bring him in to be my backup. Just in case if we make it to the postseason, I can be like, hey, if Dorwood ain't working out. Because technically I have not played with him just yet. 
have not used at him just yet, maybe Eli will be the answer. Just saying. That's my thinking behind it, okay? O-line, still freaking solid. Got Mike Williams, right tackle playing, right guard for us. He's a mauler at 31 years of age. Todd's still getting it done. He's not as good as he once was. He, when we signed him, he was 94 overall. Now he's 91, but it's still a solid O-line. D-line still good. Carpenter is 87. Sapp was 89 when we started this. Now he's 87. Still good. All right. Dansby, left outside linebacker, 88 overall. Morrison, 88 overall. We also got the Quell Jackson right there, and that works out for us because Mike Tomlin's scheme is a 3-4, and I can't change that. I can't change that. When they sim, it's going to be a 3-4 defense, and I, again, I'm going to repeat myself. I can't change that. I've been in the scheme already. I can't change that. It's a 3-4, just so you know. So we have two inside linebackers. The outside linebackers, yes, they, they do not fit a 3-4 scheme. Yes, Warren Sapp is not going to get that much playing time. I, I know all these things, but I can't change it. And I'm hoping that we make the postseason so I can play 4-3 and let my dogs eat. Okay? Eli, he had a 99.6 QB rating. Dorwood, 95.9. This is for the preseason. I'm like... They're basically the same guy. Yes, his 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 his, his completion percentage talking about Dorwood was not that good, but they're basically the same guy. Let me go with the youngster, and it worked out. We start off the year two and zero, but to two teams, I finished ten and six. Then we went on a win streak, like you wouldn't believe. We beat the Lions again. Detroit got to see Calvin in person and see how much it felt to get beasted and feasted on by Calvin. We beat the Patriots, who's been struggling this franchise, believe it or not. And we made it back to the postseason is what I'm trying to tell you, okay? If we win the last game of the season, we win the West. But we lose to the Houston Texans, who are 6-10. and 10. Not a good look. But, hey, we finished 10-6. and 6. The Chargers finished 10-6. and 6. They had the tiebreaker, so they win the division. Congratulations to them. Let's check out the stats. Did I make the right decision at quarterback? I think so. 4,100 yards, 36 TDs, 10 interceptions. Got sacked a bunch of times, but hey, is what it is. And actually, I was looking at the completions, like the number completions, not completions percentage. So again, I think I went with, with the right guy. When I saw that Eli had 54 completions, I thought, again, that was completion percentage. And I was like, oh, maybe I should go with Eli. But I'm glad I didn't because Calvin balled out again. He's having back-to-back phenomenal years. Antonio Gates, he helped out. Okay, we are just doing our thing out here in the passing game. Calvin with 13 TDs. He went to the Pro Bowl. So did Antonio Gates. Dequell Jackson led the team in tackles. Like I said, 3-4 scheme. So two inside linebackers out there. Not going to be that way in the postseason. 120 tackles. Five for loss. Six sacks. Just out there. Just just, 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 just manhandling people. My goodness gracious. What are you eating, Dequell Jackson? I need to get on your diet. Seven sacks for Dansby. Carpenter as a nose tackle got six sacks. That's good. That's good, okay? D-line, you're not supposed to get crazy numbers. You're supposed to be able to watch football. Anybody that watches football, you know how important a good D-line is. Don't look at the numbers for D-line. If they get a whole bunch of sacks, that's phenomenal. But you ain't looking for that. Whole bunch of tackle for loss, that's good. You're not looking for that. You're looking to see, does the line of scrimmage move back in the quarterback's face? And do you change the line of scrimmage for the running game, okay? That's what it means to be a good D-line, good front seven, if you ask me. Yes, stats are sexy and fantasy football is, is crazy and everybody loves numbers and stuff. Just what do you see? What do the eyeball test show you? Okay, that's what I'm trying to get at. Anyways, man, it's postseason time. Done talking. We are taking on who? The Baltimore Ravens again. Where? In Baltimore. We have to go on the road. It's going to be second-year quarterback versus second-year quarterback. They have mentor, like I said. We got Darwood. Let's go. Hughes trying to turn the corner. Huge hit put on Hughes. Second down and seven. Time to go downfield to who? Calvin Johnson. Straight monster people. That crap used to tick me off. Every time somebody would pick the Broncos, pick the Patriots, excuse me, online, I'm picking the Broncos because they had Champ Bailey and you need a champ and you need a prayer. You need a Champ Bailey and you need a prayer to help you get through that day taking on Randy Moss, Tom Brady, and the goons that were the Patriots back in the day. Willis McGahee, he's a goon in this. High-stepping from the 10 with people on his neck. He don't care. Touchdown, Ravens, and it's 7-7. Second quarter action. Looking downfield, Antonio Gates makes the catch brought down by Ray Lewis. Looking downfield is Dorwood. Let's him fly. That's going to be caught by Johnson, who's loose. 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Raiders. Let's go.
That's what I'm talking about. That is what we needed. First down and 10, Dorwood looking. Now he's going to tuck it and run Trevor Price giving chase. Do not let Trevor touch you. Your quarterback will be limping off of the field with injuries off. Like, for real, for real. Trevor Price in this game was an absolute man child. Okay, I'm just trying to remind you in case you forgot. They send the heater off of the edge and we get blasted in our back. Second down and 18. Eubanks! OJ Eubanks, 6'7", the man is a monster. Then back to Calvin. He can't make that catch, but that's okay because on second down and 10, we have Eubanks, 6'7", beast. Touchdown, Raiders, baby. Touchdown, Raiders. Third quarter now. We're up 21-7. to seven. Antonio Gates in traffic. He makes the catch. Okay, this the, the, the wide receivers on this team, the tight ends. Just phenomenal. Just phenomenal. Okay? Got to give the ball to Hughes who fumbles. That was a hit stick. They got a good jump. He fumbles. Okay? Sometimes you got to live with it. Sometimes things are just not going to go your way. And then one of my free agent cornies coming through. One of my free agent corners coming through in a major way. All that speed got us back inside the five just like that. The Hughes. Brought down in the end zone. That's a touchdown last time I checked. It is 21 to 7. Minter looking like a great value. Joe Flacco. That's really discount. Because Joe Flacco, he was kind of discount in my opinion. I'm sorry. Second down and 10. Letting that thing go. That's caught. And I tried to sign this guy. And he will not come to my team. So I was like, forget you. But now he's doing it against my team. And then right here, Ray Lewis forces the fumble. And I'm like, okay, that's Ray. But can this guy carry? He has 95 carry and he's fumbling the ball like this in the playoffs. What the, it's the playoffs. Hang on to the football, baby. Hang on to the football, baby. Please. Third down and five. And Minter, he's going to run the ball. He's going to pick up a first down. Now he's going to drop back the pass on first down and 10. That pass caught by McGahee. And I'm like, why can't my corners cover McGahee at the backfield? He ain't Chris McCaffrey or, or Marshall Falk or somebody. They go for it on fourth down. They don't get it. And we leave Baltimore with our first playoff victory. That's big. That's a good look. Did our thing. 28-14 is the final. Let's move on to Marshall. Shut up. We, we are moving on to the divisional round. I'm just happy that we got past this round. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm a happy man. Okay. Hughes, 53 yards, rushing and two TDs. I like it. Eubanks, three for 70. Big Calvin, two for 85. That's all you need. Eubanks and Calvin, sprinkle in some Antonio Gates, and you're going to be a-okay. You feel me? I know you do. So we come to Baltimore. And we get the job done. Warren Sapp got in there with another sack. Because he's a beast. He's an absolute beast. Chargers over the Jets. Eagles over the Packers. And the Bears, they beat the Skins, who will not make it past the wild card round this time of round. Uh, this time around. Anyways, divisional round. Raiders, Dolphins, Bears, Seahawks, Chargers, Colts, Eagles, Saints. The Dolphins, they won their division. And they got a first round bye. But overall-wise, the team is not that good. So I don't know what's going on with New England. Oh, by the way, Bill Belichick is now coaching the Buffalo Bills. So Brady can't do without Bill, and Bill can't do without Brady. Imagine. Im imagine. Who knew? Just imagine it is what it is, right? We get in there with the sack. That's Dansby. All up in you. All up in you. P pause. Anyways, man. They're going to throw that thing. That pass will fall incomplete. Will it? No, it will not because, I mean, it was. But pass interference, so it negates that. Cole Pepper hands it to Ronnie Brown, who is loose. Taking him back to his Auburn Tiger days. Gets, us all, gets them all the way inside the 20. Now it's third and goal from inside the five. And we're there shutting them down. Get off the field and take your football with you. They kick the field goal. Three, nothing is now the score. Second down and three. Going to get that thing to Hughes. And Hughes is loose. He's going to get upfield for a big time gain. Second down and 10. Up that guy goes. Hughes breaks the tackle. Turns the corner. I'm telling you, man. My drafting skills in these old Madden's is A1. Maybe I'll do some new rebuilds in Madden 22. I don't know. I don't know. I might just stay in my own line, stick, stick, with the re, stick with the old school rebuilds. I don't know. But, hey, your boy knows how to draft some talent. And having freaking Antonio Gates come to town, I'm telling you, I just, I just shoot my shot and it worked out. I was not expecting to get him or Fanica or even Todd, right tackle. I was not expecting to get none of them, but it worked out. And the guys I did expect to get, they, they wouldn't come. I mean, like, who knew? Oh, no. Oh, 
no. Hughes to the left side, picks up five. Third down and five, and it hits Antonio Gates. I was trying to hit Chris Cooley in the back of the end zone. Hits Gates in the back of the head. Ball falls incomplete. So 3-3 is the score. Not bad. Going up against one of the best teams in the whole league. Had a first round bye. Best team in the AFC, I'm reckoning, and who knows. But then they throw a Dante Culpepper special. To who? Fabian Washington. So we got this thing going back the other way with the INT. Up the gut. Then bounce it to the outside is Hughes. Now up the gut. That's a first down. Second down and 13, though. What can you do for me on third down? I mean, on second down and 13, we can run it. And we're going to get inside the five. Hang on to the ball, PD, and he does. Third down and three. Give it to Hughes up the gut. Touchdown, Raiders. And the Dolphins are in trouble. This ain't the sea of hands, baby. But y'all about to be fishing in a sea with your hands. Saw what I did there? I know that was corny. <laughs> Anyways, first down and 10. 10 to 3 is the score. Looking downfield. That pass caught by Tedgen Jr. And that's going to lead to a first down. Second down and one. They give it to Ronnie Brown. And Ronnie Brown gets brought down by Warren Sapp. But they get all the way inside the five. Second down and three. Breaking a tackle is Booker. And he's going to get into the end zone. So 10-10 ball game. What can we do? We got Calvin. And Calvin, he doesn't catch everything. But 99.9% .9 of the time, he is bringing that thing in. Looking downfield and getting sacked is Dora Wood. So we have to protect the homie Anquan, but is this not happening? Looking downfield one more time. And it's caught by Calvin one more time. Let's go. What a luxury to have this boss from Georgia Tech on the squad. And let me run the ball with Hughes who gets into the end zone. Touchdown. Raiders 17 to 10 is now the score. Dante Culpepper looking. Namdi. Osmoa with the INT. Big Namdi coming through when I need him to. And now we're going to run the ball with Hughes. Going to turn the corner and he is gone. That 94 overall speed comes in handy, baby. And we get the victory. Miami, you got to go home with the L. You had a great year for regular season. But that, but that sucks, man. That sucks. It really does, man. You have the best record. And then you lose in your opening playoff round. It's just not a good look. It's just not a good look, man. But that's why you can't really judge football the same way you judge other sports. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like a pitcher in baseball. They lose in the playoffs. They, they just lose in the playoffs. But if you get a first-round bye in the playoffs and then you play a better team in the division round than you would in the wild-card round, is that really say that, oh, well, this guy hasn't won the Super Bowl. This guy hasn't won, I mean, won a playoff game. This guy hasn't won a playoff game. But every year he's in the division round to kick things off. Let him be in a wild card round and see what happens. I'm just saying. I'm just thinking about stuff like that because I'm a geek. I know. I'm sorry. Anyways, conference championship game. Raiders traveling to Indianapolis take on the Colts. And the Saints traveling out west to the northwest take on the Seattle Seahawks, who are 12-4. and four. They are also 12-4. and four. So, let's get this thing going. We will get the ball first, second down in Twizel. Looking downfield is Dorwood. He's going to let that thing fly. Caught by Mr. Johnson because he's nasty. First down in 10 we're going to give that thing to Hughes. Tries to turn the corner. Get off of me. Forget trying to turn the corner. I'm going to turn the corner. And whoever is in my way, he's going to have to pay a price. And then looking downfield is Dorwood. Touchdown, Calvin Johnson. Reminds me back in 1997, 98 when they had Jeff George throwing that thing to Tim Brown. Oh, my gosh. The Raiders sucked back in the day. They really, really did. But it was always fun to watch them play. Because, you know, historically, it's one of the better teams. So it's always fun to watch them play. And it's kind of fun to watch them lose, too. Because I'm a Niner fan. Don't hate. Anyways, man. Third down to 13. We take over. Look at that field. We're going to find Antonio Gates not going to have enough. So I'm going to roll the dice on fourth down. And we're going to pick it up. And, man, was that risky. I know it was. Third down to two. Hughes up the gut. And Dwight Freeney comes off of the edge untouched. I'm going to go for it again because I'm a dummy. And we do not pick it up. We don't pick it up. We don't pick it up, man. Second down and eight. Peyton Manning looking downfield. Peyton throws that thing. Caught by Wayne. Gets chopped down, but Wheezy has a gain of six and a first down. Then they're going to throw that thing again to David Boston. David Boston, he's coming through. No more Marvin Harrison. They have David Boston. They have Gonzalez from, uh, from Ohio State. Also, David Boston from Ohio State. And then you got freaking Reggie Wayne from you Looking downfield, throwing that thing. Caught by Eubanks. Makes the catch right there. My boy Dorwood. I'm telling you, he reminds me of this. Jeff George. Let that thing fly. <laughs> Jeff George. If he didn't do one thing well, it was just throw the football. Throw the football, see what happens. He would throw some missiles out there. Johnson makes the catch. We're going to kick the field goal from here. Kick is up. And the kick 
is good. So, 10-7 is now the score, ladies and gentlemen. Third down and five, Peyton Manning audibling, and this audibling, and this audibling. It's telling you, man, these Colts games take forever because he just sits back there and audibles Omaha just, just, just the whole time. First down and 10 from the 44. A die is loose. A die. Gets brought down before he picks up a first down gain of seven. Give it to Joseph Adai again. The LSU Tiger gets brought down by the Texas Longhorn and Michael Huff. Now Manning dropping way back. Throws it. Caught by Hedgecock. And that's going to lead to a first down. First down and 10 from the Oakland 31-yard line. Manning from the gun. Looking to let it fly. But Tommy Kelly is in your backfield with the sack. Tommy Kelly is in your backfield with another sack. So third down and 21 at the back-to-back -back sacks. They throw it to Wayne, who can't make the catch, so the Colts appear to be in trouble, trouble, trouble. Going to run the ball with Hughes, and Hughes goes nowhere fast. Bracket up in your back. to say, hey, look at me now, playboy. Look at me now. First down and 10. Manning looking downfield. Let's fly to Fabian Washington. Let's go. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about, baby. They get the ball back again, 17-7 to the score, and another INT, and we are loose down the sideline, Peyton Manning, you are not the slowest Tom Brady, but you are definitely the opposite of fast, so 10-5, I'm not about to let y'all get the ball one more time, I don't care if it's one second on the clock or no seconds on the clock, this game be cheating sometimes, so it might as well be zero, and we are going to the Super Ball. That's what I'm talking about. We outdid Peyton Manning. We outdid Peyton Manning. Only threw the ball 10 times. And that's all you need when you have a great defense like the one I built here with the Oakland Raiders. Calvin Johnson, 3 for 77 plus, I believe, a TD or two, right? I believe one. One TD. He was out there doing this thing like he always does. He always does his thing, okay? He's my man, Pots and Pans, all right? Bob Sanders, he's a beast, man. Bob Sanders, he makes all kinds of tackles out there, but his Tackling ability could not help his team score. So it is what it is. Super Bowl. The Raiders over the Colts and the Seahawks over the Saints. So it is a old school AFC West matchup in the Super Bowl. That's right. Hasselbeck. Dorwood. The duel is on. Let's get this thing popping. You feel me? Here come your Oakland Raiders. Antonio Gates. Hughes. Calvin Johnson, the quarterback, Dorwood. The Raiders are ready to go, and they are rocking and rolling on to the field here in Detroit. Sean Alexander, they lost the Super Bowl here years ago to the Steelers. Now you have the Steelers' old head coach in uh, Mike Tomlin. Of course, he did not win that Super Bowl. That was Bill Coward. Yo, right after that game was over, my TV did shut off. Like, for real, for real. It was one of those old-school box TVs. Like, this right when flat, flat screen TVs were, like, in. And I, I'm telling you now. The game is over, right? Bill Coward gets the gets the Gatorade bath, and then boom, the TV just goes out. It's poof, static everywhere. I was like, dang, that's crazy. And like two years, two days later, we got a new TV. It was like, it was like, man, that's crazy. Anyways, back to the action. Third down and four. We could not connect the dots, and I'm like, this might not look too good. We're already down by seven. We just went three and out. They had the MVP of a couple years ago, and I'm like, what is going on? And Mike Holman won two coaches of the years. Like, we could be in trouble, and I mean, Sean Alexander was just on the cover of Madden back in Man 07. I know that this is 08, but geez Louise. Hasselbeck, looking down the field. Hasselbeck, let's fly. Caught by Hackett. Who is Hackett? He makes the catch, and that's going to be a first down. Second down and seven. Matt, lay it down. That's John. First round pick, baby. Respect him. He's a beast. He's going to be in that Hall of Fame, and that was a perfect pass. That was an absolute perfect pass to Deion Branch in the back of the end zone, a Dawkins dime. We throw it to Calvin. We got to get something going quick, fast, and hurry. Second down and 13 after a loss of three. We throw it to Antonio Gates, who did not feel like catching the ball. He did not feel like catching the ball. Reminded me of Tim Brown when he finally got to the Super Bowl versus the Buccaneers, and he didn't feel like catching the ball neither. My gosh. What is going on, Raiders? What's the, there's about to be a riot in Oakland, in L.A., in Las Vegas, all the cities that host the Raiders, because this team does not want to feel like playing in the Super Bowl. We find the ball. We find Porter with the football. He makes the catch. That's a good look. Taking the shot deep to Calvin, and again, it doesn't always work. Anybody thinks, you're just throwing up to Calvin on that. It doesn't always work, man. It doesn't always work. It does not always work. Eubanks doesn't feel like catching the football as Ted Topo. Knocks it out, and that's going to do it for the first half of play. So second half, down by 21. We got to score quick, fast, in a hurry. Not now, but right now, Eubanks, he don't feel like catching the ball no more. 
you know, hit that 6-7 frame, did not come with hands. Eubanks makes the catch that time, and Peterson just delivers the boom stick upon his forehead. Running the ball with Hughes just to pick up the first down, but time is not on our side. Looking downfield. Letting them fly to Gates. You know I want to throw that thing to Johnson, but hey, just take the easy pass. Looking out for one more time. Gates makes the catch yet again, and we're in Seattle territory up to the 40-yard line. Second down and 10. Dorwood rolling out. Still rolling, and he's going to get trapped in the backfield. What are you doing, sir? Looking out for that pass caught by Cooley. Cooley coming through when I need him to. Fourth and one. Can we pick it up? Yes, we can. Because Calvin, he, he did it that time. He did it that time. And then third and goal, we run the ball, and we're not going to get there. We had it first and goal inside the five. Now it's fourth and goal at the one. QB sneak, and we go backwards. Unbelievable, sir. Unbelievable. So third down and six for the Seattle Seahawks. They throw it, and Namdi coming through. No wonder Kerry Washington loves him. He is such a good football player. Fourth down and seven. Dorwood looking downfield, and Dorwood, he's going to take off. Has enough for the first down. Dives, and they give him a touchdown. Who knew? Who knew? So 24 to 7. That's they march down the field and get a field goal. We got to score quick, fast, in a hurry. Looking downfield for Calvin. He makes another catch. Let's go inside the 20. We're cooking with Grace. Grandpa's recipe. Looking downfield to Calvin. Oh, that animation so pretty. It's so pretty. Yes, it is. We will get the ball back with a minute on the clock here in the fourth quarter. Down by 10. And Babino is like, no, sir. No sorry, Bob. No, no sorry, Bob. And that's going to do it, man. That's going to do it. We did our thing, though. I'm not going to lie to you. We did our thing. Um, To recap this uh, dynasty, this franchise, this rebuild, we made it to the Super Bowl, as you can see, but we did not get the job done. But we made it there. We got to the postseason twice in five years. We did not win the division. We should have won it this year if we beat the Houston Texans, who finished the year six wins, ten losses. We might have had an easier road to the Super Bowl, but it doesn't matter because we lost to the Seahawks, and we lost to the Seahawks, and we lost to the Seahawks. It really doesn't matter. Uh, Jamarcus Russell, he would still be on the Detroit Lions at this time. He is their starter now. John Kenna was their starter for, I believe, I believe, the first year, maybe even first two years. But in this season, Jamarcus, he was the full-time starter, and the Detroit Lions were not in the postseason. So there you go. Anyways, man, that is going to do it. hope you guys enjoyed the video. hope that the rest of your day is the best of your day. And until we meet again, my friends, peace, love, hot sauce.